Hello. This video is part of a series created to raise awareness of the Croton Waterworks, a piece of historic infrastructure that has been bringing fresh water to New York City for 170 years. In this installment, we will discuss the impact that the Croton Waterworks has had on the lives of ordinary people. In order to do so, it is helpful to ask ourselves two basic questions. What did the Croton Waterworks do for people, and how is it experienced by people? Let's take a look at the first question. What the Croton Waterworks did was provide New Yorkers with their first reliable source of fresh water on a scale that came anywhere close to satisfying the needs of the growing urban populace. This had many ramifications. Before the opening of the old Croton Aqueduct in 1842, people who could afford it imported casks of fresh water from sources outside the city. Everyone else either drew water from increasingly polluted local wells or relied on the equally dubious water flowing from the pitifully undersized reservoir of the Manhattan Company. As a result of these conditions, New Yorkers were regularly visited by disease, the most devastating instance of which was the cholera epidemic of 1832, with an official death toll of 3,515 people. A disproportionate number of these deaths came from slums like the notorious Five Points, which was populated mostly by impoverished African Americans and recent Irish immigrants. When the old Croton Aqueduct was completed in 1842, no clear scientific link had been established between contaminated water and diseases like cholera, and so it is hardly surprising that there was another outbreak in 1849, which once again had a devastating effect on the city's poor. It certainly does seem that the availability of fresh water improved the quality of life for wealthy New Yorkers, many of whom were moving uptown into newly constructed homes featuring bathroom fixtures fed directly by Croton water. It also allowed for the proliferation of public bathhouses, such as the moderately priced People's Washing and Bathing Establishment, which opened on Mott Street in 1852. But even this could not put a stop to cholera outbreaks in 1854 and 1866. The complexity of this situation, continued epidemics on the one hand, and significant sanitary improvements on the other, illustrates just how difficult it can be to gauge the impact that the Croton Waterworks had on public health. It would appear that the old Croton Aqueduct, while conceived as a water source that would service New York for generations, could only barely keep pace with the city's growth in the mid-19th century. However, by the time of the opening of the much larger new Croton Aqueduct in 1890, there were definite improvements. In the 20th century, waterborne epidemics became a thing of the past in New York City. Certainly there were many other factors contributing to the eradication of these diseases, such as advancing scientific understanding of bacteria, the construction of public sewers, and the massive expansion of the water supply to include the Catskill and Delaware systems. But the significance of the Croton Waterworks as a source of clean, fresh water cannot be underestimated in any narrative describing the advent of public sanitation in New York. There can be no more potent a reminder of the significance of this historical development than the observation that even today, because of the lack of clean water sources in many parts of the world, a waterborne infection like cholera is still responsible for the deaths of tens of thousands of people every year. Another connection between the Croton system and public health involves fires. A periodic event in the early 19th century, a particularly catastrophic fire in 1835, destroyed 20 blocks of mostly commercial property and resulted in two deaths. Although planning for the Croton Aqueduct was already underway when this blaze broke out, the awful devastation of the Great Fire of 1835 accelerated municipal efforts and galvanized public support for the construction of the water system. However, as with disease, the precise impact of the Croton Waterworks with respect to fires can be difficult to gauge. Another fire in 1845, three years after the completion of the old Croton Aqueduct, broke out in almost the exact same place as the 1835 fire and destroyed 300 to 350 buildings. And although the availability of pressurized croton water for the fire hoses likely prevented even greater property damage, this blaze actually killed dozens more people than the 1835 fire. Indeed, well into the 20th century, most public conversations regarding fire prevention actually focused on the protection of buildings and the consequent reductions in insurance rates, rather than the protection of human lives. Nowhere is this better illustrated than in the case of the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire of 1911, in which the building itself was saved, but 146 garment workers died. Once again, as with the discussion of disease, the introduction of water from the Croton Waterworks was but one factor, albeit a crucial one, in the story of reducing the devastation of fires in New York. 
If you are interested in learning more about the social and cultural history of the Croton Waterworks, please see the next video in this series, or visit our website for more information on the waterworks in general.